Yeah, hello, my name is David, aka Cletus from J Hipster. Um, I w I'm gonna use this opportunity to show one little trick. Uh, I find out how to use the debugger uh, from when you're working on a J Hipster or various Angular application uh, and Chrome. A uh, little bit of background. Uh, I was a quite lazy coder at as soon uh, like until today, until right now, because I was just too lazy to find out that simple trick. Because you know, like if you're debugging Java applications, that's quite straightforward. You just hit the debug button there, and everything works like a charm. Uh, and uh, as a background and PHP uh, developing uh, with the memory of sp killing hours for just setting up this xdebug thing uh, connected with the browser and stuff like you know and then with docker containers and stuff and stuff and stuff I was always like well do I want to really uh, hit another three hours of deb uh, debugging setup just for like uh, or I just use console lock it is uh, from uh, like some time ago uh, the angular support from jhipster moved the no console uh, yes, linter rule. So as soon you use a console lock in your code, you the linter will say, "Well, that's not good." So and you, uh, the app doesn't compile. So you have two ways to go. You can, well, like three ways to go. Uh, one way is to use the uh, per line uh, linter rule disabler. So you say for the next line, the linter does not complains about me using console lock. And the second way is you well. Yeah, remove this rule from ESLint, but there's actually a best practice why this rule exists. Or the third way is you use the like professional debugging stuff. So how this works, I'm gonna show you here right now. So um, when you open uh, a JavaScript application, uh, this is a gateway, but it, uh, with a monolith that should work the same. I'm gonna show you that I am working here with a quite um, current version of the hipster, it's uh, 691, yeah, so it's maybe one or two months ago when we generated this one. So we have entities here, we have uh, blueprints for our stuff here, but that's not interesting. Interesting is that as soon as you open it with IntelliJ, you will see this line. Sometimes it plops out here in this corner where, yeah, okay, you don't see it because um, my video is on it there, but uh, never mind. So if you ever lose this, you can just go here to event lock. Yeah, still, well, man, maybe that helps. So here, yeah, event lock, and you get it. So, well, um, when you configure it like this, uh, at first, you will see here the Angular CLI server, and then you go on uh, on the run edit configurations. And I just found out that he uh, the Angular application was automatically included here because of using this uh, configuration, and this works because IntelliJ is quite uh, intelligent to see that we have an Angular application here, we have an Angular JSON there. And we, yeah, it parses through, and I'm quite sure that uh, this will work the same for WebStorm and PHP Storm or whatever. Well, if these tools have Angular support, so I'm using IntelliJ, but I'm sure it should work as well for the other stuff. One thing to know is that when we work with the hipster, you're not using the CLI convenient port 4200, but we're using old, uh, old good brother sync port 9000. So we do this here with the 9000 port. And yeah, save this and and go on. So now we have three things. <coughs> we have the <coughs> Spring application, which we're gonna start right now. So it's just going through the build process. We can watch it here. Yeah, we can close this one here. It will. Yes, you you see, I'm using Gradle. Yeah, so it's just the Gradle process is once working through. Once this thing is here, you will see this one here should start right now. Okay, 
So now, yeah, yeah that's a different banner that's uh, from our corporate blueprint. So now we have this thing working. So now I go here and start the CLI web server. So this is for us to, um, yeah, so to have the actual Angular process running. So we start Webpack on port 9000 and have browser thing up and running. At this place, uh, uh, if you have an open browser, this should open. But you just, for the debug thing, you can just close it. Uh, I've used it on another screen, you haven't seen it, but in a different screen, there was a thing opening. So, and now you go here and say, we debug. And what should happen is that we uh, that here now opens this application. Don't be confused that this does not look like the usual uh, jhipped application because I'm using a corporate blueprint which is changing it to the way how our company wants it to look. Yes, so, and now the, the, the question is, well, I have here some process which I'm currently trying to debug. And I go in here and uh, we now switch over to this thing going here. And you see it's a little bit plopping. That's the debugger already going inside. So we go here and now bam, there it is. This is debugging in a way how it should actually work. So you don't need any console log statements anymore. So we go here and see what's happening there. And my current issue, oh, come on. Yeah. yeah, well, this is something I will have to figure out because there's also some debugging stuff here. But yeah, I can go here, here, bam. Yeah, and this is the way how I can debug. In the same way how we debug Java applications or PHP applications or whatever, different applications. Well, this video just took seven minutes for me. I don't know, maybe some is helpful for you to have this in mind. So I wish you a great day and never use console lock again. You can use it this way. Be a professional coder. See you there.